Welcome, coders. We'll be releasing videos every month that show you fun ways to get hands-on with code. My name is Sophie, and I'm an instructor here at Kids Code Jeunesse, a national charity that gives Canadian kids and teachers access to digital skills. Today, we'll be creating and coding our very own recycling-themed video game to celebrate Earth Day and the global goals. The global goals we're working with today are climate action, life on land, quality education, and responsible consumption and production. So the first thing you're going to do is click the link down in the description, and that's going to send you to our starter project, which is right here. And if you have a Scratch account, you can remix this project. And if not, you can just click see inside and save it. So just for people who are a little new to Scratch, I'm going to give you a quick introduction. So in this section right here, I have my coding blocks, and these are the ones I'm going to put together to create my script. This spot over here is where I will test my code and I'll be able to see it in action. These two are my sprites that I'm able to program. And I can see that I get that little icon here in the corner so that I know for sure which one I'm programming. And over here I have the backdrops. Now, if I want to create more sprites or more backdrops, the icons are right here. And I also have a bunch of useful little tools that are going to tell me the name of my sprite, the current X and Y coordinates, the size, and the direction that it's pointing in. Now this here is my X, Y grid and all of the numbers that go with my scratch project. So this is the coordinate 0, 0. And to go this way, I have to go up. And you can see my X goes all the way to 240 and to negative 240. And my Y goes all the way up to 180 and down to minus 180. So the good thing to remember here is that X is horizontal and Y is vertical. And the good way to remember it is that Y is a vertical letter. Now, don't worry if you don't fully understand this, it's okay. I just want you to have a basic understanding um, for when we use it later. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna program my starting point. So my starting point is where I want my recycling bin to start when I begin my code. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to my event blocks, and these are the blocks that start my code. So I want my code to start when this green flag is clicked, which is my starter button here. And then I want him to start in this location. And you can see as I move the recycling bin that the coordinates on the left are moving. So I'm going to put it exactly where I want it, or you can just keep it where it was at the beginning and drag this block and put it right under my when green flag is clicked. And now wherever I move it, it should go back automatically to its starting point. My next step is to get my recycling bin to move to the left or to the right. So I'm going to go back to my event blocks. And I'm going to choose two of these when space key is pressed blocks. And I'm actually going to change them to right arrow and left arrow. And then once you've done that, you can go back to motion and you're going to do a change X by 10 for the right arrow, because we know that going up by 10 will take us to the right from our grid, and change x by minus 10 to go left. Now, what happens if I put 10 in both ways? Even when I'm clicking on the left arrow, he's going right. So I really want to make sure I do minus 10 here. And that's all the code I need right now for my recycling bin. Next, I'm going to program my water bottle. And for again, for this one, I want to program a starting point. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my, my green flag. And I'm going to put my go to XY coordinate. And once again, they should both go to their starting points when the green flag is clicked. My next step for my water bottle is to get him to move down. So I'm going to go in controls and get a forever block because I want this to keep happening. I want him to continue going down. And then I'm going to go to motion and I'm going to grab change Y by 10. And I'm actually going to change that to minus five. Now he 
goes down and we can see he disappears out of the screen. And that's okay because our next step is going to be to get him back. So now I'm gonna to go to controls again and I'm gonna grab an if then. And I want, if he touches the ground here, to go for him to go back up. I'm gonna grab a nice useful block in sensing called touching color. And I can't here just go to any brown and hope that it's gonna work. It has to be the exact same brown because computers don't see color, computers see numbers. And if the number is just one number off, it doesn't recognize it as the same. So to do that, I'm gonna grab my picker upper here and I'm gonna go suck up the brown color so that it's exactly the same. And then I'm gonna tell my water bottle to go back up to the top by putting the Y as a big number up here. So I can put it as high as 180 because we know that that's the top of my Y coordinate. And now every time he touches the ground, he goes back up, but he's always going to the same spot. So I wanna change that. I wanna make him go to a random spot anywhere on the screen. And I know from before, from my XY grid, anywhere on the screen is between minus 240 and 240. So I'm gonna go, so I'm actually gonna go to operators and I'm gonna take a nice bubble called pick random and put it inside of my X block. And then I'm gonna change the numbers to 240 and minus 240. And now we can see he is always going back up to the top and to a random spot. Next, I wanna do the same thing so that he goes back up when he touches the recycling bin. So I'm actually gonna go to controls again and I'm gonna go to if and instead of touching color, I'm actually gonna take a very useful block. It's gonna be in touching mouse pointer, but then I'm gonna change it to touching bin. And then I'm gonna put this same thing here inside of my if then. And you can either do it the same way again, or you can duplicate it and put them back in there. So now when he touches the recycling bin, he goes back up to the top. So now we have the base of our game. What we're missing next is for us to have a score where it can count the number of times I touch the recycling bin. So to create my score, I'm actually gonna to go to variables and I'm gonna make a variable that I call score. So my first first step is to set the score to zero. And I like to program that kind of stuff in my backdrop, but you can actually do it anywhere. So I'm gonna get my green flag because I want it to go to zero at the beginning of my game. And I'm gonna put set variable to zero and I'm gonna make sure I change that to score. If it stays at my variable, it won't work. And then when I go back to my water bottle, all I have to do is put a change score by one inside the if touching bin. Because if I put it inside this one, it'll give me a point for touching the floor. And that's the opposite of what I wanna do. So now you can see every time it touches the bin, I get a new point. And this is a great place to add sound. So to add sound, I actually am gonna go to my sound tab here and click that. And I can go click on this icon here to see all of the different sound options I have. So I'm gonna to go to effects, but I know the name of the sound that I want. So I'm gonna go with that. And once it's here, I can go grab it in my code under sound. Now you want start sound coin, not play coin until done, because then you'll get a little lag. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a timer. So once again, you can do this anywhere, but I think the backdrop is a great place to do that. So to do that, I'm actually gonna create another variable called timer. And I'm gonna set my timer to 30 if I want it to be counting down. Or if you want it counting up, you can set it to zero. And then I'm gonna go into control and I'm gonna grab my block repeat 10. And I'm gonna change that to 30 because that's the number of seconds that I have. If your game goes on for longer, just change it to the amount of seconds that you want your timer to run for. And I'm gonna grab my wait one second. 
and I'm going to change timer by minus one because I want it to go down. If you want your timer to count up to 30, all you have to do is change it by one and start it at zero. And lastly, I'm going to put a stop all at the bottom. So now I should have a working timer. Now, my last step is to copy my water bottle here. So I'm going to right click on the water bottle and press duplicate. And that's going to duplicate my water bottle with all of its code. And the only thing I want to do to the second water bottle is I can maybe change the speed. I can make it go a little bit faster. And I'm going to change the starting point to maybe something else. So that it starts at a different spot. Now you can see I have one that goes way faster than the other even though it's just two numbers higher. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to have our non-recyclable object. So I'm going to go click on my cat icon here to get a new sprite and you can find anything that you shouldn't put in a recycling bin. So cheesy puffs for example do not belong in the recycling bin. They belong in the garbage. And then I can go grab all of this code and I'm going to stick it in my cheesy puffs and I'm going to wait until they wiggle and do that little dance and then I let go. And now that they should show up in my cheesy puffs and they're still in my water bottle. So now I have three things that are moving. And again, you can change the speed if that's what you want to do. And you can also change the size. If you find they're a little big, you can make them a little smaller by changing the size over here. Now, because this is a non-recyclable object, I don't want to get a point every time it goes in my recycling bin. So I'm going to change my score to minus one, and I'm going to take away this sound, and I'm going to go and get a new sound, a bad sound. So you can go again in your sound library and choose a negative sounding effect. So I like oops over here, so I'm going to click that one. And then you can go use sound and play start sound oops and there you go I should get minus one point when I click on the cheesy puffs and now we have the basics of our game so that is awesome good job you guys for following along like this video and subscribe to our channel for more coding tips and tricks